Hey, hello, hello. Just waiting for everyone to join before we start. Hi, guys. <laughs> hello, hello. Do you guys hear me, anyone? Yes. Hello. Hello, Arman. Hey. Hi. Hi, son. Everyone. Just looking for a nice function and the background. <laughs> well, Minu asked me to put on my shirt, but I forgot. So, Esan, you're representing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Greg. Hi, Wade. Hi, Crypto, Bernard. Thank you for joining. Would love to see you guys. If you are, if you want to come on camera, we would love that. But of course, no, no pressure. If only if you want to, sure. Of course. We're just gonna give a couple of minutes so anyone who wants to join has the chance to then we'll start. Start at 302. It's now 259 ET. You're actually early. One minute early. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Bargarn. Oh, we have Kate. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hello. Twinsy. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel ashamed. I should have put it on. But yeah. You don't have this, this headband, though. <laughs> <laughs> All the colors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll start and very soon. <laughs> All right. Commute. Okay, 302, let's start. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are. So happy to have our first face-to-face -face or voice-to-face -face, uh, call together. Uh, this is the first assembly of function landers in the metaverse, metaverse web two, obviously. We are still using Zoom, hopefully. One day we will be running something on Pula Network. That's a video conferencing app. So 
that would be really exciting. Um, so happy to be among friends. Wait, hello, <laughs> love you, man. Um, so we have a, a few agenda items that we want to start off by. Um, and then we'll give floor to everyone in the call to start asking questions. Armand, can you quickly run us by the agenda, please? Yep, sure. So first of all, thank you everyone for joining. We have a packed agenda. We're going to give you an update on where we are. Uh, we will start by focusing on the most important thing, that is the hardware side of things. So blocks, where we are, what's happening, what are these delays. We definitely know that we hear a lot of frustrations and, and uh, you have all the rights to be frustrated. So we are here to talk about that and tell you what's happening and when you are going to get your blocks. Then we're going to give you an update on the software side of things. So um, as you know, like we have many dApps that we are in progress. We have a blockchain that we are building up protocol. So we're going to give you an update on that one. We will finish with a surprise. So I will not say what it is. So I will let Elfon talk about that. Um, so yeah, so it, it will be around our main net and testnet, but I will not talk about it more. And then we we uh, finalize it with a Q and A. So we already got some questions, so we're gonna like answer those. But of course, it's gonna be open to anyone who has any questions uh, around all the topics function. So with that, I will pass it to Kevin, please. Sure. Very cool. Thank you, Armand. So the first things first. Um, I'm sure you've seen. Uh, the video from the like a month ago on the shell, like the devices shell, where it's um, in, in, the enclosure for the PCB, which is which goes inside and uh, everything. But you haven't probably seen is the PCB itself. So we communicated that uh, on February and the February the manufacturer would was supposed to deliver PCBs. And they did. So in reality, this is batch zero, what I'm holding. So <laughs> this is the batch that was before batch one. This is the Raspberry Pi uh, compute module four on the board. And these are the three USBs that are then exposed through the shell that you can connect three expansion cards to. Um, what, what happened with batch zero, so we were ready to ship out with batch zero um, we had a deficiency with the uh, an IC here because we are doing something that's not been done before with this carrier board specifically. So as you are aware, there are many CM4 carrier boards out there. What's interesting about uh, the uh, Blocks Light Tower is that it's going to be the first carrier board that exposes uh, CM4's functionality as USB-C, USB type C. So um, on batch zero, what we did was we took another step and we added display port capability to two of the HDMIs, one to the bottom here and one to the USB uh, at the bottom of the board here. Like this is where, where this is like goes from the bottom of your tower and then the uh, first row. These two were display port capable. Um, and we had a batch. We had uh, enough to contribute until contribution 160. But then uh, we figured that the display port functionality specifically, meaning that you can connect an HDMI cable and connect it to a monitor and interact with the Raspberry Pi OS, Raspbian. That still didn't work in batch zero. So what we did was we discarded batch zero and we ordered another batch. That's why it's taken until now to ship out. The great news is batch one has been manufactured now and is gonna go from the manufacturing house to Hong Kong where it starts distributing in two days. So March 25th is the date that the, the FX boxes will live the manufacturing house 
whole packages and everything. And on it, this is in the announcement part. Uh, first couple of weeks of April, both batches one and two combined will will start uh, receiving their shipping numbers and delivery info. So yay, <laughs> we are finally here. That was the first good news on the FX block side. So soon you're gonna uh, receive your blocks as a hand finally. Um, Armand, you mentioned the, uh, and I, I think we had this conversation specifically with Wade as well recently in the group about, uh, about why the delays happened and uh, this discussion around why the device is not already at hand. Um, the first design that we have right now is based, is contingent on uh, Raspberry Pi CM4. So uh, this is, this, this board that I'm holding is only a carrier board. The CPU, the RAM, the Wi-Fi module, everything is, exposed to the carrier board through the component that's supplied by uh, Raspberry Pi, the CM4 module. Um, so we initially, when we launched the campaign, we, we've been in contact with Pi Foundation, Raspberry Pi Foundation, where they have like a startup program where they support startups and medium-sized businesses and directly supplying them with Raspberry Pi modules be it CM4 or other modules that they have, Pi Zero and Pi 4, all those beautiful things. And what happened was when we launched the campaign, we had the communication from Pi Foundation that will receive a batch of 1000 CM4s, which we need for the product by November, 2022. And this was the reason that in the campaign, we put the first batch will be heading out on November, 2022. What happened was that November came and uh, we asked uh, Raspberry Pi to send us the modules and they said, well, um, you're not gonna receive it because there's shortage. <laughs> and uh, they said, end of January, for sure you will receive your 1K batch. So that's exactly what we communicated to the communities. We sent an update on the Indiegogo to all the backers saying this is how the situation is developed. Um, at the same time, we secured uh, enough, enough uh, CM4s from the gray market. So this is the scalper market where they sell three times, four times their normal prices, uh, stuff that should be available to everyone. We, we secured enough modules to uh, be able to ship uh, up until contribution number 160, was it, Harman? So right. that's the action that we did back then, um, was to enough secure enough Raspberry Pis to, to burn through at least some of the early bird uh, supporters so we can deliver to them sooner as we can. Um, well, and then January, end of January came, and we had another communication with Pi Foundation, and they said, oh, we, we know we told you for sure you will receive it now, but now our new estimate is you will receive it by November, 2023. That easy, so like, okay, so <laughs> no pies for us now, essentially, because this has happened. Fool me once, shame, I, shame on you. <laughs> Fool me twice, what was George Wish saying? <laughs> um, so what we did as a contingency was we said, well, no more of this. And we searched for contingencies. We landed on another uh, system on chip, which is uh, now very prominent in new uh, Raspberry Pi competitors. Uh, and that is um, a system on chips by Rock Chip. So RK3588 is the new chip that we've, now have a design for it, for what we've called FX Flux Lite Plus. So FX Lite, Lite FX Flux Lite Plus will be, we won't, we won't be like this, a carrier board. It will be a complete board, including the CPU and RAM and everything. So this time around, we won't be held hostage by uh, someone, some vendor that, 
provides this like core module because we have control over the whole board ourselves. And in swapping parts in this board, we have now settled on parts that are not in shortage. So um, as soon as we get the first couple of uh, prototypes and confirm everything works on the plus design, we will be ready to start shipping out. And our estimate for that is by end of next quarter. Um, um, I will just say, just show you quickly a block diagram of FX blocks light plus, and then I will uh, shut my mouth. <laughs> Evan, can can you also can you also share the differences between like why we call it plus and like what are the differences and what basically you can do that you could not do with the with the pre previous uh, light? Sure. Sure, yeah, I will, I will describe these on the block diagram. Which screen are you guys seeing? The Zoom screen or the, do you see RK3588? Yeah, yeah, you see. Perfect. So this is the block diagram of the plus. So a lot has changed here. So the first thing is uh, that CM4 by Raspberry Pi has a, um, a CPU, an ARM CPU designed from 2014-ish. And it's not a very fast CPU there. Um, whereas with RK3588, we are on the on ARM cores, eight of them, eight ARM cores, cores from 2020 design. So the CPU is much more capable. Uh, to give you a comparison, this almost has two thirds of the power of an Apple M1 CPU. So this is very on the desktop territory. And um, I also have this other board at hand. This is the Orange Pi 5. So I've been testing a lot of boards recently to, like not, not recently, but like in the past few months to settle on a, an alternative for our plus device. Uh, first, I, 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 I was uh, along our hardware team, I, we were experiencing with RISC-V architecture. So this is uh, Star-5 version two that has a RISC CPU, RISC-V CPU. We first uh, conducted some tests on this. We ran protocols on it and everything. And it's a good experiment. It's it's it works out cheaper for for the end users, but it's also a subpar experience at the moment. So we decided not to go for the risk five architecture at this moment. But the future with that architecture is very promising. On the other hand, when when we tried Orange Pi and Rock Five B, which are using the variants of this Rock Chip CPU, so. Orange Pi uses RK thirty five eighty eight S model, and um, uh, Rat uh, Rat five B uses what we are using, so without the S. And the one without the S is the more capable one. Um, then we figured out that you no, know, everything works smooth. Uh, another plus point was that uh, out of the SOC directly. We have support for USB Type C on Rock Chip. So, as I told you, like we had on the on our carrier board, we are converting USB three that uh, CM four exposes. We are converting it to USB Type C, and then we also take the HDMI outputs that um, Raspberry Pi gives. We convert them to DisplayPort and then expose them again through Type C. But with Rock Chip, uh, it was direct. So we have two ports with DisplayPort capability directly coming from the Rock Chip's SOC itself. So uh, and the rest we are converting. So for the for the bottom USB here, we are taking the uh, DisplayPort and we are putting it in a switch and moxing it with USB. So again, we will have DisplayPort here. Importance of having a DisplayPort on the bottom of the tower is 
when the uh, hub comes, hub tower comes, then it can act as um, a docking station for, for your Hula tower. And then you will be able to uh, see your display from hub instead of from the Fula tower. So that's why the bottom USB is good to have the display port capabilities. Um, one very interesting difference in our new design is you are not supposed to, uh, I mean, th th this is uh, this, the whole concept is for th the reason that the hardware exists is for it to be plug and play, right? So we're not expecting anyone to have like uh, an engineering degree for them to be able to run and operate a node. It can be, it will be a package that you plug and play. Um, what's interesting though in the new design is if you are the type that you want to open up your tower and you want to extend the capabilities that are inside. So you already have expansion capability, expansion capabilities through expansion cards from outside. But from inside, there wasn't much expansion capability unless there is maybe in a couple of years, a compute module five by Raspberry Pi and you take this out. If it's compatible, you plug in the new one. Um, however, with the new design of the plus, we are exposing two, two M2 slots on the board. That means you can internally, like inside the tower, connect, these beautiful things that are M2 SSDs, uh, M2, M2 storage devices. So this, these can be SSD or NVMe. So this is uh, what's uh, possible on uh, the new Rock chip device because we have PCI Express version three here. Whereas on Raspberry Pi, we had on the CM4, we had PCI E2. So we have PCI, PCIe3, where you can connect uh, NVMe drives. And then we have SATA, where we mox them. And then you can use the same port to connect either the cheaper SSD, uh, SATA3 SSDs, or NVMe SSDs internally. This means that out of the box, Light Plus can be upgraded without any expansion cards uh, to Currently, I think on, there are NVMe SSDs for of up to four terabytes. So what we will do for the Light Plus is we will, on the, on the XL orders, we already put a one terabyte uh, SSD in there, which is upgradable. You just unscrew the button and put in a, if, if you want, a bigger NVMe in there. There's also another M2 connection for Wi-Fi because what, What's most important uh, is in, in the full network design is that the connection, we, we are not bound by the speed of SSD in full protocol, right? So having a drive that is like hugely uh, speedy is not necessarily help, much help, unless you can have that speed over your Wi-Fi, which is how your phone communicates with your tower, right? And for that reason, in the Light Plus, we are making Wi-Fi modular as well. So there's another M2 slot, so two M2 slots on, on the Light Plus, where we already put a Wi-Fi 6 module by Ratsa in there. But again, next year, if there's like a flashy Wi-Fi 7 module, so this is like an Intel Optane that I have here. This is a Wi-Fi 6. But next year, if there is Wi-Fi 7, because, because Wi-Fi, remember, Wi-Fi is our bottleneck, not storage speed, where you can, in your home, achieve speeds of, I don't know, two gigabits per second instead of 300 megabits. Then it, in Light Plus, it's, again, upgradable. And what else we have here? Uh, Armand, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm too geeky or am I pointing out the differences as you're, you, you'd like to hear. So Plus is better as the non-geek. Yeah. <laughs> For me, as as far as you say, the plus is better is enough. <laughs> but I, I I I don't know about like others on the call, like the, the community. I don't know if anyone has any more questions. Of course, feel free to write it in the chat. 
Sure. Uh, the, uh, and I'm done, I'm done talking. Arma, do you want to maybe pause me talking at this point? If see if anyone has questions yeah, from the audience, I, I, and I, then I, yeah. then again continue with the rest of the agenda instead of me just talking, which I don't like. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I I think we can after this we can we can move to the software section. Sure. But let's just pause. Let's just pause. If anyone has any question, of course. Armin. Mark. Please. Yeah, just while we have Kayvon on stage, we talked about all the different um, capabilities and functions and features that this allows us. Could you just talk, uh, Kayvon, to the capabilities around decentralized science and decentralized AI? Like, will we be able mm -hmm. to do more sort of processing now with these the advent of what you've got? Sure. No, the, thank you, Kate. The, one, one exciting thing in this new chip is that it comes with an NPU unit. So neural processing unit, meaning tensor. There are tensor um, tensor cores in the SOC itself. And this is something that's on other rock chip boards as well. Uh, but what it enables, which is very exciting for Fula Network, is if we can find a partner who's working on decentralized LLMs, large language models. And that would be a gateway to having a true decentralized alternative to something like ChatGPT. So if a partner, so this is outside of the scope of the functional land team, we already have a lot on our plate. I mean, my plate being my table is completely full. But if, if we find a partner that wants to chime in and utilize the devices, the uh, light plus devices that people have to start uh, a um, LLM deployment, which is actually decentralized, it, it, it paves the way for that. Did that answer your question, Kate? Cool, thank you. From the community, hi guys, anyone wants to ask? hardware questions before we move on to software. M Matthew, are you free. trying to? Yeah, I, I see Matthew is not connected to the audio. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, feel free to write your questions. Um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to come on camera, sure. if you don't want to. Balgorn, I saw your uh, video for a sec, and that was amazing. You had like a very cool V4 Vandetta like mask or something. That was super cool. Uh, <laughs> anyone wants to dox themselves? <laughs> we have a question. Is, is the product energy star rated, Kevin? So, uh, so the um, products as we hold it, doesn't have any of the certifications. And that was one of the major blockers on delivering XLs at the moment, uh, because that, that process is very time consuming to get all the certifications. So the product as it's packaged doesn't have any logos and certifications attached to it, but the components inside it do. So CM4 is energy, not, not, not energy star rated, but uh, watt rated. So you, you, you know how, how so it, CM4 operates at uh, less than one watt, which is the core of the Fula Tower. RK3588 for light, light plus, it's the same. So we are, Operate our, our product on, operates under one watt, but no shiny stars. And uh, hopefully, when we do mass production, we continue mass production and start selling out. We need to then uh, get all the fancy logos and uh, things on it, and it, it will be hugely energy efficient because we are talking ARM architecture, uh, which is why you don't see. Uh, uh, Intel CPUs on your phones, for example, because they cannot open operate on under on one watt. So we are ARM and 
when we get energy star rating, we're going to get the greenest of the green. Yeah, I just wanted to say that we're going to get those certificates for sure, because that's basically part of the plan. So as, as you're going to start like selling on, for example, Amazon, like we, we definitely need to have uh, those certificates. So that, that's, that's on the plan. Any other questions on hardware? Wait, I'm, I'm looking at you because I know you have many questions. <laughs> Feel free to write them down. I wait. <laughs> okay, also if there are no questions, okay, I see. How about UI list, UL? What is UL? Sorry that I don't know this already, but what is UL? <laughs> Can you UL list it? What is that? Safety, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is about uh, safety issues with the product. Um, again, we don't have certifications on the writers. Love. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm I'm bringing it up. Let me quickly share. Yeah, it's a it's an EU thing. Uh, I think Evan. So it's yeah, yeah. scary that safety. Yeah, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. But that means me defined requirements which is safety so meaning it it won't burn up my house if it's well exactly diego this was the problem that we had with excel so we couldn't deliver excel we weren't allowed to ship excel because when i, I didn't know that the european version is called ul but the general category is power certification and safety certified and because the XL has an AC component, meaning there's an ACK pool, the 110 or 2010 volt, 2020 volts cable coming into the device, uh, we wouldn't be able to ship them without that, that whole uh, process having been done. Uh, so the, the reason that it can, I, I, I Crypto Burner, I, I see your other question, how does it pass costumes? because it's a DC device. So when you, the Fuller Tower isn't an AC device, it isn't uh, 110 volts. So it's, it, it, you plug in a uh, smartphone charger to it and it operates. So it, it's, it's, it doesn't have any, uh, because it is not AC enabled, it doesn't need those certifications to pass customs. And we've already shipped dev kits, if you, as you know, that, that too was an AC device. So no problem there. And of course, just, just to add, like the device of course has been tested by us. So it's not like for the first time you're gonna, you're gonna use it at your, at your home. So we are testing them internally. And um, we also plan to work with some like different uh, companies that they do this set. So this is what takes time, right? And this is why why we had to postpone the Excel. Yeah. I, there's, I, there's physically yeah. no way for it to catch fire or anything. Worst case scenario, a capacitor dies if something in a circuit is break, broken. Whereas in Excel, if, because there is AC coming in and there is like a huge uh, trance there, then there is possibility of fire if you could, don't get certified. Did you see another question, Armand, somewhere that I'm not seeing? Yeah, I just want to say there is another question that I think it's a, it's a great gateway to, to suffer. Um, okay. Yeah, but let, let's see, like, wait before we pass, before we go to Premier to connect to some external hard drives. Sure, wait. So, um, the, so the question is, uh, can I connect uh, external hard drives to my Fula tower? 
that's exactly what we've been trying so hard to get to work, right? So these three USB-C connections are then exposed through expansion cards, right? And with expansion cards, I'm not sure if you can see it. You can, you can, you can either connect the storage expansion card, which has like one terabyte already in here, or you can connect type A or type C expansion card. So these two, you can then connect any peripheral to this device. And specifically for Fula protocol, you can connect external hard disks and add it to the network. So that's that's the whole, I mean, that's, uh, that's the um, advantage of the blocks form factor, what you mentioned in weight, uh, that you can connect any storage to it. And that's that's what made it hard to make. <laughs> uh, Armand, what's what's the yeah. other question you're saying? Um, I'm not seeing that. Yeah, the question is about, yeah. Uh, if there is no other hardware question, maybe how we start the certification. If there is no certification, how they pass the customs? Yeah, I yeah, answer, yeah, we answered that one. Yeah, so we, yeah, I, I think let's let's just start with the question from Crypto Burner, and then mm -hmm. maybe we can continue. The, the question is, will batch one blocks onboarding be easy, and will we start earning tokens after this? So I think that's a that's a great question to pass to you, Sun, and let's start with the software update. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, everyone. So on software, actually, we've been working on the uh, background. So you've seen a couple of uh, uh, things we posted, uh, the integration of FX photos with the backend, with our protocol side, which showed like a demo. Uh, the two applications, FX files and FX photos, which went uh, they're published on Google Play and uh, App Store for FX photos. So those were the progress. And since then, in the background, we've been working on the blockchain side. So Fula will go live on Polygon first. So that will be like uh, the, the like basically the, the first chain that we integrate with, and you will be earning Fula on Polygon. And we've been also working on a third app that hasn't been published yet. Uh, uh, we, we are finalizing it uh, this week. And that's the application that you're going to use to set up the blocks app and also see the earnings, uh, transfer them basically to, to your wallet and everything. So like that's what manages everything on protocol side. Uh, like join pools, see the available pools, leave pools, like those kind of stuff. And this app is called blocks app. Uh, the onboarding process for like of, of, of any blocks holder to the ecosystem will be done through that app. It's a few steps you just click uh, so that the onboarding like from the experience is when you plug in your blocks, it goes to hotspot mode. You connect to the hotspot, like the application, the application connects to the hotspot of the blocks. Uh, you do a few steps like uh, connecting your wallet, connecting it to the Wi-Fi of your home and then it's up and ready. And it will be running protocols and blockchain. You will be you will start earning uh, full lot tokens on testnet first when you join, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and like you, you basically can join pools, vote on other requests. So each pool has this voting mechanism that people in the pool should accept that request of the new members. Uh, and uh, store other people's files will be done automatically. Basically, all, all files are, are encrypted on your device, sharded, and then sent to this network. And uh, yeah, so those are the things that we've been working on the background. Some of them you've seen, some of them will, will be sh like basically published uh, within the next two weeks. Now, Crypto Burner, I will just very quickly summarize for you again. Um, the flow that Esan mentioned uh, about like how you connect to your blocks is similar to like normal IoT devices that you currently purchase, right? Your vacuum cleaner, your smart TV. We've cooked in that flow and hopefully that 
that cooking works. There might be some hiccups, but we are going to be here in the community to answer any questions and any issue that may come up. But we, uh, on, on the onboarding side, I mean, on the infrastructure side, uh, everything has been uh, worked on to work as flawlessly as possible. And for the earnings, we will, for, we, we still don't have the main net life, but you will be earning testnet tokens. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah. Onboarding, I mean, that, that was the whole idea behind blocks, right? That is just plug and play. It's just easy for everyone to use. And uh, so that's basically, hopefully it will be in the experience experience and this is what we are working on. So there are two questions, um, one from Greg. Um, I'm running blocks on Docker on my Synology NAS. How can I earn full of when it goes live? Trying to fix photos now, I still haven't found where the actual photos are stored. So, take that. Yeah, so earning full of uh, so, so basically like we, we, we actually, we are publishing some Docker images ourselves. So we packaged and Publish Docker, Docker images on Docker Hub ourselves. For Raspberry Pis, if you are running on Synology, uh, probably you are making it yourself. But yeah, as long as you are running full of protocol, I think what you are running right now is only full of protocol, not full of blockchain. Uh, full of blockchain should be, uh, the Polygon integration should be ready, like the EVM integration actually should be ready uh, next week. So when you run those two together, yes, you will be earning uh, a full uh, and for earnings, actually, I, I, I'll, I'll later pass it to Airfund to do explain like a tokenomics, a testnet, and mainnet uh, tokens. But uh, that's the plan. Yes, you, you you can run it on any device, not you know Synology, your laptop, anything, and you you still earn. And by the way, so cool, Greg, that you're running it on Synology. That's a huge feat and very exciting thing that you're doing. We, this 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 was always a, a a goal that we create flow protocol and blockchain in a way that can run on any hardware that people own. So the only thing that we are very like focusing on and the tokenomics uh, tries to uh, encourage is don't use AWS. Run your nodes physically. <laughs> and actually, to to add to that, Greg, maybe you can also later when the package is complete you can also share your docker images so that other people who are running synology can also use it maybe or we, we can also help you set up like a documentation and other people can follow useful on their synology devices perfect uh armor i see another question from way yeah. about testnet so wait this is so we armon mentioned it surprise at the end this will relate to that super that's that's essentially the surprise itself is in your question <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah yeah i mean if, if there is no other if, if there are no other software questions we can basically pass to tokenomics and uh we'll just wait a couple of more seconds any any questions on the software side, protocols, everything full on it for Kate. Hey, Armin, I just wanted to say before we get to Irfan, um, so our team now has a physical location in Toronto. So we have teamed up with the Innovation Boost Zone at Toronto Metropolitan University. So it's really exciting and they're um, excited to have us and there's a maker space being set up. And I hope that as uh, K1 tosses out his Wi-Fi sixes and everything, we can beef up that space. but. Just letting you know that that space is happening. And then later on in August, there's going to be um, the Futurist 23 conference happening again with ETH Toronto. And there's going to be really strong presence from the ETH women all coming together and being a part of that hackathon. So there's going to be new venues and a lot of excitement happening around that. So um, stay tuned to that community, um, along with its other exciting announcements we'll be saying. Um, stay tuned on what's happening on the ground here in Toronto. So JJ, I see you. And I know last time you sent up one of your friends from the States. So let's do that again. And if you're coming up to visit us um, in the summer, let us know so we can help you find accommodation and make sure you looked after up here. And uh, be happy to have you up here in Toronto. So great to meet some of you and uh, looking forward to hearing from Irfan.
Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, looking forward to it. Erfan, so the floor is yours, please. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Okay, so uh, I was looking at the questions and I saw that uh, a few of questions was uh, in regard to the surprise that we talked about. So uh, the surprise is where uh, we're going to start signing up uh, for our incentivized testnet. And the way it works, uh, the people who join the incentivized testnet gonna get, uh, gonna earn uh, testnet tokens. And at the time of the mainnet, they're gonna get uh, mainnet tokens airdrop to them. But the ratio or the way it's gonna be uh, calculated, uh, we're not gonna announce it right now. It's gonna be at the time of mainnet. Uh, but you can go sign up uh, for the uh, incentivized testnet, testnet right now and uh, become a testnet uh, node. Here is the link. And uh, also, what I wanted to mention is that the spot is limited and uh, not everyone that signs up, it's going to be in the testnet. Uh, so uh we decided to prioritize <clears throat> sorry prioritize uh the indiegogo backers first so if they sign up for the incentivized testnet the, uh, the first batch and second batch that they're going to get their devices they can sign up they're going to be in the testnet for sure and then we're gonna uh, have some more people from the public uh in the testnet as well but this spot is limited so please go and sign up and earn tokens and you're going to get airdrop at the time of mainnet we have a docker image for that right yes <laughs> but as airfront said the incentivized assessment uh, the 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 ratio that converts and everything is based on the spots available so we have a form available before docker go sign up on there and that's it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, Greg. Thank you. Yeah, of course we're gonna we're gonna start with our with our backers. Oh, sorry, sorry. One one thing to mention. Uh, if you're if you are Indiegogo backer, please make sure that you sign up with the same email that you use on your Indiegogo. Uh, in that case, we can uh, kind of figure out that you're an Indiegogo backer and you're gonna be on the test net for sure. So use the same email address, please. Very good point. Um, another part of that question was about uh, listing on exchanges, Irvan. Yes, uh, so about the exchanges, we already secured two exchanges for listing. But uh, unfortunately, uh, due to the NDAs that we signed, we cannot uh, say the names of the exchanges, but rest assured, uh, there are tier one exchanges and uh, we're in talk with uh, some other exchanges as well. And uh, you're gonna know everything by the time of mainnet launch, don't worry. Another thing I would add is the testnet token will continue to live on. And we will have a configuration similar to uh, Polkadot, right? Where we have, where Polkadot has both KSM token, the Kusama network, and the Polkadot network. We were going to we have the same situation where we have the testnet token and mainnet token, and they continue to exist and coexist. We're going to first test new capabilities. We won't even call it testnet by that time. We'll call it canary net. We'll taste, test new things that we bring to, we want to bring to Pula Network first on the Canary Network. And then when it's battle tested there, then we'll bridge over those capabilities to mainnet. Another reason that we've not done a mainnet by now is, as you're all aware of it, it's the shit show of the market. So we want, we want everyone to be in, in, in a place where there is not as much market negative sentiment when we go live with the mainnet, and uh, because technically, like on 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 technical side, things that are needed for going live, we already have them. 
uh, we just want to do a bit more hardening and uh, some more uh, some more uh, tr partnerships on trust before we go for the mainnet. And that's why we already don't have a mainnet. But testnet is fine. Uh, Ali, uh, the question has not been asked about XL. So XL is ready. Um, so we have already the designs over at GitHub. So if I share real quick my screen number one, you go to GitHub, function land, then this is the blocks repository. This is where everything is. Uh, like the PCBs and the boards that themselves are open sourcely are are <laughs> distributed in with an open source license. Open sourcely is a new adjective which I just invented. Weird. <laughs> um, so this these are the PCBs for the hub tower. So the uh, that there are like four PCBs that go into the uh, hub tower. We already have the design for them. We have an initial prototype that that's been tested. What's pending is certifications and also optimization. So one hope that we have with the hub tower is if we can, after the fuller tower, this standalone tower has been shipped, we can hopefully maybe with the hype of it, partner up with one of the big, um, Docking station makers of the world. So think you green anchor. I mean, your, your docking station vendor. And then what we can then do is, so you, you see that, you know that our current design is double tower. So it's double width tower. So your current hub tower with the design that I showed you in the GitHub will occupy two slots in your base. Another interesting thing is if one of those partners come in and we can do a single width hub tower. So we're waiting on two things to answer to to answer your question sh shortly. One is we're waiting for the certifications, and this is going to be very long and bureaucratic. We don't have ETAs on it for the double width tower, but at the same time, we are working on partnership with docking station manufacturers to have another design which is already certified and ready to be distributed by one of the docking station makers. If if that materializes sooner. That means uh, XL sumer. Evan, there is a there is a last part of the question. Ali asks, "What can I do in the meantime?" Oh, and, and in the meantime, so yeah. we are not blocked by by the hub tower because the standalone tower is standalone. So, so it's or already has three expansion cards. So you, you can or already have the capability to use your standalone tower with external hard drives with more expansion cards. In the meantime, play, we can all play with our uh, standalone tower. And then when the hub tower comes, the interesting new thing that it brings about is adding new towers with completely different capabilities. So we already are in talks with some other protocols that want to do compute, decentralized compute instead of decentralized storage. And as soon as those materializes, we may have a GPU tower where we can have, and, and there can be multiple tokens on your same Excel device. So you have your Fula token, this other partner comes in and you add another tower, you, have, you mine another token with their network. So that's the... That's the what what the Excel brings to the table: multiple protocols on the same hardware. Um, but at at the, at this time, there isn't even if we had them, there isn't anything material out there to put on on the uh, other slots. Did that answer the question, Arman uh, Ali? I think so. I think so. There, there is a similar question in relation to partnerships. Uh, what are the strong towers? I don't know, maybe K1, do you want to chat about anything? Anything we can share or Kate on anything on partnerships? But I think the, the question is more related to what are the other towers we can add to the FX blocks that uh, just align the lines you were just talking about. Um 
I could speak to one or two use cases that, and then turn it over to Kayvon. So thank you so much for the question, Crypto Burner. So one of the um, use cases that we could talk about, so Kayvon said one of the towers could do something completely different than what function land is designated for. So some of you may have heard of the project Huddle 101, or there's another project called Live Peer. So these are two projects that are trying to say, how can we do Twitch or how can we do YouTube in a decentralized fashion? And that is no easy case. There's a reason that Google had to acquire a takeover YouTube to make it functional and, you know, Twitch struggles, let's say, to be profitable to this day. So this model that we bring to the table could really revolutionize that. So Huddle 101 and Live Peer looking for who could help with transcoding. So how do we get give that Netflix like experience that launch of that video without that buffering? How do we do that? So these boxes could help do the transcoding decentralized locally. So those are types of partnerships that we're speaking to who says, can you help us with the compute? Like Kayvon said, not just storage, not just store our stuff, or but can you help the compute and delivery around streaming, live video and other things? So that's one use case that we're really excited about. Um, I'll turn back to you, Kayvon, to talk on other opportunities, maybe on the hardware side, if you'd like. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I mean, that's that's the thing. Hardware, making new hardware is, as we all know, <laughs> hard and time consuming. <laughs> so uh, it's it's a challenge for our partners to come and like straight build on this new form factor. Another interesting aspect that has been recently uh, talked about specifically with PiFi network. So our community member, Big Onion, he introduced us uh, on Twitter to this other uh, network, the, the PiFi, called PiFi. They're like a sensory data monetization network. And they were very exciting and having a tower, but they, they don't have a big team that can manage hardware or anything. So an interesting path that PiFi is now thinking about is to use the existing hardware. So the same PCB that we use for the Fula tower, for PiFi tower. So you will have two towers on your Excel, which are identical in hardware, but in use case, in software that's installed on them, they're different and they mine different tokens. So that's, that's the immediate term uh, thing that will come out. People who just use our same hardware, meaning our same PCBs, and then, then come up with this, essentially the same thing as the Fula Tower that we currently have, but change the software on it and expose new capabilities. But for GPU or like another, I don't know, Tensor Tower, another dedicated storage tower, those are things that need hardware capabilities. Uh, but from our current partners, mentioned, Kate mentioned live here, and we also have Koi, who's we're very interested. Koi Network, K O I I. We are in talks with them. Um, these are the friendlies. There are people who are we are not very close with that are all, also in talks, but we are not sure if we can mention them by name. Voldemort. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I remember when we were talking about hardware software side of things and the fact that it's going to be open source. So any independent hardware geek, hardware geek can just come up with an idea and start creating new boxes or new towers for the blocks. Um, and we, of course, would love that. And we would help them to, to resell it even on our website. But uh, this this was the whole beauty of like making everything open source that everyone can just join and yeah, help us. Great produce. point, Armand. Now, this is essentially a story of our hardware as well. So we adopted expansion cards. So we are not making expansion cards ourselves. These are made by Framework, the laptop manufacturer. But what they did was they open sourced this design and that that, that allowed us to incorporate it in our design, right? And we're doing the same thing. We are open sourcing our design so other people can create other towers. And we're using standards, both frameworks, uh, us. We are all building on USB type C standard, which allows this uh, interconnectivity between things that can be from Venus and Mars and still work together. Yes. 
Okay, uh, do you, Arman, have like a backlog of questions that we still haven't burned through or? Yeah, I, I mean, think the answer is awesome. There, okay. there, there was one in relation to like, how can I, where can I communicate with you guys? And where is the best place? All right, Maybe we that's, that's chat important, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Well, I mean, we have been trying to be omni-channel, <laughs> so, uh, be available through through Twitter, through Telegram, through Discord and everything and email and everything. And the reality of it is that we are responsive, uh, not all of them. So we apologize and we feel sorry for it. So Discord has not gotten in as much love as we would like to give it. Uh, Telegram has been most active. So we would welcome community members who are active and are in, in, in the know about this stuff to take initiative on giving a push to other platforms like Discord. Like if we have a Discord champion that can like come and say, hey, I will handle Discord, that would be hugely appreciated. But currently we have, where it's just emerged to be most active, not by design, just by, by coincidence, is Telegram. So the most reliable source of getting answers quickly and efficiently at this moment is Telegram. Uh, Discord, again, we, we, we have Minu who monitors it, but then people who readily can jump in into an answer, that place is still Telegram. Like if we're talking IM. Twitter, email, we, that, that's still like DMs on Twitter and emails are all over being answered. Uh, we're just a bit not as active as we'd like on Discord and we'll try to change that. We'll try to be more active. And just to add, if you have any questions or any points in regards to FX proxies, send it to sales at FX .land. This is something that we monitor closely and we try to answer you as soon as possible. Send it again. Sales to FX and yeah, thank you, Kate. You want to chat about that? Yeah, sure. So one of the places I mean, came on said we're omni-channel, and we're not kidding. But one of the uh, Web three projects out there that we're really close with and really admire is Piranha. So we've been one of the early adopters of their platform, and um, we've seen them grow. So I'm sharing actually the link to their community, so you can see, you know, we um quote a good one early because you can see they've now onboarded C Global and some of these bigger projects as well. So the idea there is you go and you post questions and the community can answer the questions and you are rewarded in token for the quality of your answer. So if you really know the answer as to, you know, which the box tower and this shipping dates or the innards of this and this USB port, and you can be helpful, big onion, wait, I'm looking at you guys. Um, that's a place where that can happen. And then you're rewarded for that. So it's kind of like, um, What's it called a stack overflow but for us and then you reward it and those answers get better with time so that's one place you can look at i encourage you to check it out but again if you need us um ping community managers ping us directly like get our attention our community is organic and small and close and we're family so just we're here for each other and we're still at that size that we can really all work with each other one-on-one -on -one. so do check out piranha i'll put the direct link for functional land as well um and then yeah thanks for the opportunity armin to mention that one of course, of course, I also shared the R community and Piranha, so feel free to go there, ask questions, answer questions. We would we would love that. Um, I actually see a couple of questions there. Like one is, okay, well, this one is interesting. Where can I buy FX blocks hardware in 2023? Ah. <laughs> Shopify. <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> That's the Canadian in me, sorry. <laughs> No, no, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the answer to everything we ever want. So, so we want, that was, the, that, that, that was the whole idea, uh, idea of function land, right? That you shouldn't be clicking something on the internet to buy cloud. You should go to store and buy something from the store on the, on the corner of your street and own it, not rent it from the big tech, right? So that's the end goal. Hopefully, like not in 2023, but in 2025, from your local Costco or and if you're in the UK, Asda or I don't know what else, 7-Eleven, um, I don't know. 
So, <laughs> but in 2023, uh, the plan is to open shop.fx.lamb as Kate pushed it, put it. it. It will be on Shopify. So we will, on the, on, on the, on the batch that ships for the third batch that ships by end of Q2, we will have some extra inventory. So we will cover all the Indiegogo backers and we will still have some extra inventory. So that would be the first time that we will put the FX blocks for a place for others than uh, people other than backers who can buy them. We are all looking forward to that. Is that Q2? Correct. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. So the batch three is 1000 units and uh, for backers, uh, 700 something are remaining, uh, would be remaining by that time. But then we will have 200, 300 extra inventory end of Q2. Yes. And, and that's the plan is then to open up, open up sales to the wider audience. So we need to back order in uh, like uh, 1000 uh, coefficients. So we can, it, when we get 1000 orders, we can have one batch. So what we will do, we will we will create batches on our Shopify, and then as soon as there's one thousand requests coming in, we will fulfill them, and so on and so forth. Okay, well, do, do do you want to answer the second part? Like, is that not for large blocks, or is it? Oh, the one for uh, for the the current batch that will be, be we will be making is still FX blocks light, so the standalone power power. We still don't know if XL will be ready at the same time. As I told you, the PCBs are ready, but the certification process for XL, meaning the hop tower, as you say, big, bigger blocks, uh, is, is still unknown. So we, 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 we know for sure that we will, you, we will have uh, light towers, meaning the small ones, but for the biggers, we don't know. Yes, Ali. I see another question. Um, I think also someone asked it in this in the chat. Uh, where does FX Photos store files? Essan, do you want to do you want to take that? Yeah. So when it comes, like the, the final version, where it comes, actually, it it takes all of the external hard drives that you connect to it mounts it at one as one external disk so if you plug in like let's say 10 one terabyte disks to it like three let's say three one terabyte disks to it it just sees it at a three three terabyte disks and stores those photos in in inside that three terabyte disk but it's not really human readable because it's all encrypted and sharded so if you open it, you, you don't, you, you probably just see some files that you don't even know which one is which and the folder structure is not even like matching the folder that you are uploading, but that's not a worry. Like when, when it's uh, on your phone, again, decrypted, it, 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 it can detect that the folder structure, it, it actually everything is, is there. So uh, did this answer the question or? Well, Esan, can I just re-ask it and we'll just see. So I'm just wondering from the perspective of someone who has FX photos on their phone today, right? So the photos are in the gallery app as it is. So what happens today right now, tomorrow when they have FX blocks on their desk? So right now, if you are running, running the full on your laptop, there is a, like on your home, like if, if, if it's on Ubuntu or Windows, there is a dot fula, like a hidden folder dot fula, where it stores all the data. Um, Kate, I should mention, if you download it from Google Play, FX Photos, or from Apple Store, and you just look at it right now without connecting it to your, to your device, you're essentially just uh, seeing things locally. It's not backing up anything to anywhere. You, it's just a local gallery app if you don't connect it. As soon as, as Essan said, you boot up a node uh, and then connect it to photos, that's when it, it starts to back up the data to there. Yeah, no, and I've, I've come to understand that. I think another really great 
thing that you've told me, Kayvon, is this idea of, so I have the gallery app right now on my phone and, you know, I have my wallet attached to it. And, you know, of course this hardware back end soon, but then I like this idea that you said, let's turn that red bar green. So on my Google, <laughs> one of my Google drives, I'm definitely, I'm at 96% teetering, right? And it's like, how can I just ratchet that far back and not be entering the paid tier? So that's just really one great thing to start to do. So once you have your photos or your FX files manager app, oh no, are you worse than 96? <laughs> they stop sending your email to you, by the way, once you hit 96%. Um, so anyway, so this idea of you now have this place where it can be stored and then at a time where as your own confidence grows, you can start to pull those red bars back to green and or Dropbox, for instance, I've hit my full I filled up my Dropbox, however I managed to do that. And so I'm looking at, do I now switch to paid tiers or do I then again shift those to FX files and FX photos, shift those to my blocks and then be able to relinquish those subscriptions and then gain all that disposable income back, can't wait. <laughs> so that's just a great way to think about it. I'm glad you shared that with me, Kayvon. Feels good. Sure. Um, Greg, uh, what, what, if, how do I confirm if it's correct? So in your Docker file, um, I'm not sure if in the version you've created, are you using a volume? Because if it's if, if it's not a volume, what Essan mentioned, they dot full of folder in your home. All right. If it's not a volume, then the, when the Docker goes down, then your data goes down, right? But, but if you make it a volume in your custom image and then you configure it uh, so that uh, it stores in the volume, that it won't be like the lifetime will, will outlive the Docker's. The, the images life so um you just i my, my specific uh, suggestion is pair up with massey on the telegram group right and um just double check your docker file with with him and if you're running like a, a swarm or a docker compose create a volume and connect it to the path that you can verify that the files are stored Otherwise, it will be uh, the life of the image itself. As soon as you do Control C on your uh, in your image, the data will be lost. Ali, who are those who wait for a large one? Will they be compensated in tokens? Yes, we announced this already. So there is a date that's been communicated earlier. I don't remember it by Q2. heart. Q two, end of end Q2. of Q two, end of Q two. There will be a drop to people who haven't re received it already excel by then and then if if there's again for unforeseen um, again longer delays we will again compensate with tokens again greg fx files is still still isn't working right with blocks correct greg so the backend the fuller backend for fx files is in development so fx files currently is only local but that's in the works. And also just to add one thing, like the, the name of application, FX Photos, might be confusing for some. It, it, it handles both photos and videos. So it's like a gallery, not just for photos. A question for Esa, not to put you on the spot, but I'm, you know, when I look at my FX photos app and play with it, the, I want, I'm really tempted to want to share. I want to share my photos from there. So like how far away or how do we see that happening? Or like, will that be partnerships that you envision us using to allow like sharing capabilities from FX photos? So the underlying, like uh, to, we, we use a technology from Fusion Labs, uh, like our partner actually for uh, encryption and sharing. They've just implemented the sharing mechanism a few weeks ago. And uh, so it's ready for us to, 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 to use it in our protocol. We still haven't implemented. So right now, like basically in two weeks when they go live, sharing would be through probably like Telegram, WhatsApp, whatever messaging app you use. But uh, soon after, because it's the technology is ready, it will be like, like Google where, where you add like the other person in the app and you can share a gallery with them and they receive updates from that album so it's it's, it's exactly like, like what what you see in apple photos and google photos right yeah that, that's just so very exciting because i think when we first started people were 
I'm very excited about that. That essentially makes it a social app, right? Social sharing is where essentially the backbone of Meta or these big apps. So that's just so very exciting. It's thrilling. I can't wait. And thanks to Fission, another Canadian innovator, <laughs> for inventing that and letting us open source and integrate and work with each other. Hey, I'm not sure if you have seen the question from Crypto Burner. Like, I'm not taking it. Uh, it would be easy. I think. Oh, yes. Yes, no. So, if uh, I'm not sure if, if you have the blocks hardware, then the setup is through like a few clicks, very easy. If you don't have the blocks hardware and want to set it up yourself, there are some steps included. Not to lie, like you have to know like how to open your command line, like how to do sudo, like so some steps are needed, but shouldn't be that hard. It's, it's still followable. Yes. Um, there's another question from Ali. Um, did you talk about function land incentivized testnet? We did a little, Ali, but Erfan, do you want to do a quick, like a couple of sentence recap? Sure. Yes. So you cannot sign up for the incentivized testnet. The way it works right now, you just put your email, uh, sign up for the incentivized testnet. The spot is limited. Uh, people from Indiegogo uh, who already bought our uh, product, uh, they're going to be in the front line. And uh, okay, perfect. Um, and uh, the people who sign up for the incentivized testnet and who actually become a testnet uh, participant, they're going to get airdrop from mainnet tokens at the time of the mainnet and TGE. But the amount of the tokens and the ratio uh, based on the testnet tokens to mainnet tokens is not uh, clear yet. Uh, and it's going to be announced at the time of the mainnet. So that's about the incentivized testnet. Uh, I'm happy that you signed up. And uh, again, I advise everyone here in Telegram group from our backers and from our community to sign up for that. Thank you. Uh, Greg, uh, I saw your question about the Docker container. Yeah, you need to uh, specifically in your Docker file uh, connect that path that the protocol stores the, the store the stores the files on to be connected to the on, on the volume. So yes, please do double check that with uh, Massey. And if you're specifically working on Synology, uh, I have another suggestion. Can you? create a GitHub repo and just give it some love so others can follow the instructions and do the same when you have a working thing. There's a lot of Synology users out there that you would never suspect. Yeah. They'll just come out of the woodwork. I love it. <laughs> and just one thing to add, uh, Greg, uh, in the latest version, you need to specify an authorizer parameter, which allows your photos app to write to the disk. Uh, of the back end, basically. So make sure that that is set up in the back end. There's another question, Kevin. I think it's related to testnet. Ali wrote, are we using our own hardware? So uh, to answer that question, uh, to, to answer that question, um, the people that are in the first and second batch and they're gonna receive their hardware, they can use uh, the blocks. And uh, for the rest of people uh, that they want to participate in our incentivized testnet, uh, we're gonna announce the specification for the hardware that they need or uh, the device that uh, they, uh, they need to use in order to participate in the testnet uh, in a few weeks. So for now, we're going to give people a few weeks to sign up uh, for the incentivized testnet. And uh, then uh, from those people who signed up, we're going to send them an email with the specification uh, of the uh, device that they need. And if they want, they can participate.
Very cool. Awesome. Can we have your fantastic <laughs> design t-shirts? Yes. Good, very good question. Yeah, I mean, we we thought about it. Like actually we have some other cool merch as well. Like um, we we created some for the for the different events that we joined last year. Um we're gonna add some to our shop. And of course, we will put aside some for our lovely backers. We can we can also open source them. So that's something we do. We do open source everything. <laughs> you need a, maybe you need a collection from uh, Artemis or something like that. <laughs> something that'll fancy for this season. <laughs> yeah, we can share the design. Yeah, actually, the, the design on the t-shirts are done uh, by our uh, by Shada. Shada is our FEC NFT designer. So she's actually an NFT designer, an artist uh, with the name Shido. You can you can look her up. Um, she she is a, she is a talented artist. So she she designs everything for us, and she also designed those t-shirts, and they look awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna share them for sure. Do those to share that one year later if you see this. Oh, cool. any final uh, stuff to wrap up? Um, we will all, all, obviously we will be available in Telegram for after chat, twenty four seven. And we'd love for some unboxers. If you're getting yours in the mail and you want to film yourself oh, opening yeah, yeah, it, or you see it, we would love that, right? No, no, we, we, we're gonna even put a contest. So we're gonna put a contest oh, for. Nice. Unboxing the blocks, so uh, so that if people share cool photos and, or videos or TikTok or whatever medium they, and the best ones will be getting some prizes. Yes, we're gonna have a contest around that. Thank you, Katie. It's a good good reminder. Not forget to take some photos. And thank you for sharing sharing with us. Uh, any other questions? Any points? Great. Did we answer all of your questions? Of course, crypto. Bye, crypto burner. Bye, crypto burner. Don't burn all the cryptos. Leave some for us. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, Addy. Okay. So okay. I, think I think we can we can wrap up. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. We will have more of these. This is really fun, and we should have these much more frequently. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Mark. Thanks, Wade, for your input and your good question. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.